when I saw the burial at Orance in the Musée d'Orsay when I was in Paris last summer, I just sort of walked right by it. And I think that's a good example of how when you don't really appreciate uh, the significance of something, it's hard to learn to appreciate artwork. But I picked this painting because it's an excellent example of a major art movement that we haven't really looked at at all yet in the Painting of the Week videos, and that's realism. Corbet was a French artist, and he painted the burial at Orans, which is an oil painting, between 1849 and 1850. And realism is essentially a response to romanticism. And this is a depiction of a very ordinary scene, right? Just the burial of some person. It's a funeral. And it's very realistic. There's no necessarily uh, romantic attributes here, and not that you'd be able to really discern those anyway, unless you were, um, you know, someone who would really study art history. But the big thing that you should notice about this painting is, and you can't tell from this video, of course, but it's huge. It's a huge painting. So this depiction of something from everyday life, like a funeral, of no one of significance, is painted on this giant scale that's traditionally reserved for heroic or uh, religious scenes, history paintings. So Courbet's approach was really radically innovative at this at his time, is that he used a canvas of dimensions that were usually only for paintings that were of, you know, what you would call a noble genre. But he uses this huge canvas to depict an ordinary subject with no real trace of idealization. And the reason I mention idealization is that there were different types of paintings that uh, artists were, were accustomed to painting at this time. A painting of this scale, as I said, would have been reserved for some sort of a historical or religious scene. The other type of painting that uh, would have possibly, and even still, would, wouldn't and would have normally been seen on this scale would be what was called a genre painting. A genre painting is uh, some sort of a pictorial representation of a scene from everyday life. But this didn't have the sort of idealization that was typically present in those paintings. They weren't, they depicted scenes from everyday life, but they weren't, they were idealized. They were sort of fanciful in a way. And this painting lacks that too. So it's not a genre painting. It's not a painting of some big historical event or some, you know, big religious figure or noble conquest. It's just a scene from everyday life. And in fact, people who had actually attended this funeral, Corbet grew up in Orans, and he re he didn't live there as an adult, but he remained closely tied to that city. And he actually used this funeral as an actual event, and he used people who had actually attended the funeral as models for the painting. And that was ridiculous. No one did that. If you wanted to do a painting like this, you would have hired models. But Corbet said that he had painted the very people who had been present at this interment, the, the townspeople in Orans. So the result is this very realistic representation of what life was like in Orans. And one joke, and this is just a little witty remark from an art critic, is that the burial at Orans was in reality the burial of Romanticism, because this marks the dawn, as I said, of realism, which is the movement that was a, in largely a re just a response to Romanticism. And you can see kind of how this wouldn't be construed as a romantic depiction at all. If you look at the, the nuances of color, a lot of dark greens and browns, dull grays, it produces this kind of austere, this thick tone, and it gives this kind of gloomy atmosphere to this particular painting, which makes sense because it's a funeral. But once again, it, it doesn't try to hide anything. It's simply realistic, and that's what realism, of course, is all about. A lot of people, when this was uh, exhibited in the Salon in 1850, and 1851, um, were upset about how ugly the people looked and just the ordinariness of the whole scene. And that's because they hadn't been exposed to what realism was. That's how revolutionary this painting was. No one had ever seen anything like this before. And it was originally actually regarded as anti-clerical and that this funeral was just so coldly depicted that it, it didn't even seem reverent. But it was finally decided that you've got, you know, the, the crucifix in the background there. You've got the clergy a Masonic judge, all the men and the women from the town, all walks of life, it was finally decided that this painting was a depiction of a universal understanding. And that's, you know, it's a celebration of our shared common experiences and really the glory of humanity in and of itself. And so for a painting that was originally heavily criticized, I think it became more accepted shortly after as people began to appreciate this, uh, this particular depiction of realism. But 
you know, what, what's the significance of realism? Well, it really de apotheosized and I think I just made up that word, romanticism and really the entire art world. You know, it was an avant-garde movement. It said, we paint things that are, you know, from big epic poems and history and religious figures, but why can't we just paint scenes from everyday life? Why aren't those things important too? And that was something that had never been seen before in the art world, but it was something that definitely caught on.